Good morning.
Hey, Brown Baptist family. This is the day the Lord has made, and we all have a reason to rejoice and be glad in it. We're so happy that you made the decision to worship with us as we continue changing lives and making a difference. Our prayer is that you experience the love of Christ and God's miraculous power in today's worship service. To our guests, we would love to connect with you, so please text BMBC to 27636 to let us know a little bit more about you and to receive a gift of appreciation. Help us show the world God's love through all of our digital platforms. Make sure you like, love, tag your friends, and comment on the live stream and invite others to worship with you. Here are your announcements for this week. Let's celebrate the risen Savior and experience God's amazing grace. Bring your family and friends to worship with you at Brown Baptist Easter Weekend, Saturday, March 30th, 6 p.m., Sunday, March 31st, 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. All resurrection services will be held at our South Campus, 7200 Sweeney Road. We believe in the power of prayer. BMBC has committed to covering Memphis and the Mid-South in prayer on the 25th of each month. Sign up and make plans to join us for 24-hour prayer care share. Text PRAYER to 27636 to sign up to volunteer and select a 30-minute slot are you between the ages of 15 and 18 years old looking to start or enhance your own business? Are you looking for investors, business education, and to form your LLC? You're invited to apply for Brown's Elite Society for Aspiring Entrepreneurs. Register online at brownbaptist.org. The deadline to register is March 24th. All BMBC seniors, you're invited to attend the Senior Ministry Meeting Wednesday, March 27th at 5.30 p.m. in the Senior Wing at our South Campus, 7200 Sweeney Road. You're invited to the Pivot Young Adult Ministry YA Think Tank. Me and you will never part, uncovering the principles to processing grief. It's taking place Monday, April 1st at 7 p.m. on all virtual platforms. Join your Brown Baptist family and walk for a purpose on Saturday, April 6th on Tiger Lane at the 10th Annual Sister Strut 3K Walk, bringing awareness to breast cancer and women of color. Register today and join Brown Baptist's team at hallelujahfm.com. Attention all students 15 to 20 years old. Brown Youth Initiative summer job applications are available through our Axe Career Center at brownbaptist.org or simply scan and the QR code. Youth will have an opportunity to work, earn money, develop job skills while enhancing their education and community relations. The deadline is Sunday, April 7th. Please contact Lakita Fox at lfox at brownbaptist.org for more information. Make plans to participate and shop at the Nifty Thrifty Community Sale Saturday, April 13th, 7 a.m. to 12 noon at our main campus. This is the year of less is best if you would like to share some of your treasures at the Nifty Thrifty Community Sale. Casting call, casting call. Brown Baptist is having a casting call for our soulful Christmas production, The Little Drummer Boy, Tuesday, April 9th and Tuesday, April 16th, 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. 30 p.m. in our South Campus Chapel, 7200 Sweeney Road. For more information, please contact Merle Nelson at 901-262-0454 or Mother Janet Tate, 901-230-2453 or email Janet at brownbaptist.org. Got questions about Brown Baptist? Join Pastor Orr for Q&A on Saturday, April 13th at 4 p.m. in the Main Campus Sanctuary, 980 State Line Road East. The deadline to file your taxes is quickly approaching. There's free tax preparation available for the entire community through April 13th at our BMBC South Campus, Monday and Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, or at the Lamorne Owen College Library, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Well, mark your calendars and prepare for our Brown Baptist Hospitality Weekend, April 13th through 14th. Radical hospitality, serving all no matter what. 
Bring your family out and be a part of the DeSoto County Crime Summit on Saturday, April 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at our main campus, 980 State Line Road. Come and be informed about thefts, gangs, guns, drugs, and more. There will be fun activities for the kids. This event is free and open to the public. Please scan the QR code to register today. Safeguard Consultants and Brown Baptist Emergency Response Team presents the Protecting the Flock Church Safety and Security Seminar Friday, May 17th and Saturday, May 18th at our South Campus, 7200 Sweeney Road in South Haven. The cost is only $69.99 per person or $49.99 for groups of four or more and does include a meal. Register by scanning the QR code at brownbaptist.org or text SECURITY to 27636. For more information, email Stan Eason at Stan at brownbaptist.org or Eric Williams at Eric at brownbaptist.org. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's the Denim and White 55th birthday celebration honoring our beloved pastor, Dr. Bartholomew Orr, Sunday, June 23rd. It's the Denim and White birthday bash at Guest House at Graceland at 5. 55 p.m. For more information, contact Denise Green by emailing Denise at brownbaptist.org. Those are your announcements for this week. To get all updates, information, and details, text BMBC to 27636. Visit our website, brownbaptist.org, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and X. And remember, BMBC family, it's the year of health, a year dedicated to spiritual, physical, and emotional rejuvenation. Join us on a journey of less is best as we focus on activities and initiatives that nurture our body, mind, and soul. Have a blessed and incredible week. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be exceedingly glad they're in a very special welcome to each one of y'all amen who's in the house who those that are watching online as we continue changing lives and making a difference and whether you're joining us virtually whether you're in person look we are so thankful that you have chosen brown on this palm sunday what a blessing that we get a chance today to commemorate the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem on his way to the cross to give his life as a ransom for each one of us. And we're thankful for you joining us today. If you, this is your first opportunity watching us online, please text BMBC guest to 27636. We got a special gift of appreciation just for you. And then we ask that all of us would take the opportunity. Uh, Y'all pull out that phone. How many of y'all got a text message this morning how many y'all got a text message all right well pull on go and pull out your phone i'm gonna let you get on your phone this morning and send it send that out copy it and text it to one person two person text it to a group of individual those that are online hit that like button hit that share button look post it out there if you're not already subscribed to our youtube and other social media do that as well but we want jesus to go viral and you can help us to make that happen as you invite some others and then congratulations are in order William and Chandra Moore they're celebrating 22 years of marriage this weekend hats off to them hats off to them and then brothers and sisters look next weekend next weekend is Easter weekend uh, 8 o'clock 8 o'clock 8 o'clock 8 o'clock I got a special request Amen. I got a special request. Are y'all ready for this? I'm going to be asking a whole lot. I'm going to be asking a whole lot. But I want my 8 o'clock to come to 6 o'clock. Now, here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. And I, I know, I, I know I'm asking a whole lot. But uh, the same Jesus is at 6 o'clock. The same spirit is at 6 o'clock. And, um... But everything is happening at the South Campus next weekend. And uh, what we want to happen, we want to make room for all of our special guests that's coming. And so if we can just shift one service, my goodness, by 11 o'clock, as our guests come in, we'll be able to host them. Um, how, many, how many invite people to your house and then they have to eat in your backyard? 
You don't want that to happen, do you? No, you want them to be right there around the dining room table. And so help us to make room. Help us to make room. I, I said, let me go on and tell y'all early. So we'll give y'all seven whole days, amen, to shake the jitters off, amen. But go ahead and make plans uh, to invite your guests and your friends and your family, but to ask them to meet you at 6 p.m. on Saturday, amen. Thank y'all so very much for being obedient to y'all pastor after 35 years is our pastoral service amen thank y'all so very much well and um and look we, we got we got sunday school that will be happening uh next saturday as well uh dr gwen neal is teaching a mass um Sunday school for our women's ministry. We'll have a mass Sunday school even for our men next Saturday at 5 p.m. So a great opportunity. And then all of our regular Sunday school classes are happening at the South Campus at 7 a.m. and 9.45. Well, God has been so good to each one of us. And um, he has brought us a mighty long way. And so as we have gathered today to worship him, the Bible says that as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, they were waving them their palm branches and they were laying it at the feet uh, as Jesus rode into I want you to stand I want us to give our God a wave offering this morning come on come on let's give him a wave offering this morning as our mass choir come and just lead us and worship at this time amen praise the Lord everybody come on, we can come to give God praise this morning come on open your mouth and give him praise a faithful God, we serve a holy God, and He is Lord. Come on, make some noise and clap your hands if you can. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's all in very, very easy. It's all in response. You just say what I say. I want to hear you real loud. Come on, make some noise one more time. Come on, repeat after me.
Praise the Lord. The scripture comes from John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16 in the New Living Translation, and it reads, The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's coat. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of the prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Repeat after me. Greater is he, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer, please text your prayer request to 27636. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come today, Lord, we come collectively as your people calling on your holy name. Oh God, we know that you are God all by yourself. Lord, there is none like you. Oh God, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are Lord. Oh God, we thank you for this day. Lord, you told us to enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Oh God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing every one of our needs. If it had not been for you who was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up but, oh, God, we thank you that we are victorious through you and through you alone. Oh, God, forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, creating us clean hearts and renewing us the right spirit. And, oh, God, as we come on today, Lord, let us forget about ourselves, concentrate on you, and worship you, for you seek those to worship you in spirit and in truth. Bless those who are here in person and those who are joining in virtually. Lord, let us worship you like it's our last time. Oh, God, we've come this far by faith. Lead it on the Lord. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for being a way maker. Thank you for opening doors. Oh, we thank you now. Lord, we ask that you heal and deliver like nobody can and oh god through your power help us to praise you like no other time we give you glory we give you praise hallelujah glory to your name thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord we give you praise honor and glory in jesus name in the name that's above every name we shout glory, glory, glory. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen. Oh, we shout glory. We shout glory. We shout glory, glory to his name, glory to his name. The very fact that we're here one more Sunday, the very fact that we woke up this morning still in our right mind, 
still with the activities of our limbs. The very fact that we can even worship even through virtual. We cry glory. Bless his name. Can't you feel the excitement in the air? Can you only imagine what they must have gone through on that Palm Sunday? But bless his name. supposed to do a hymn right now and the hymn is glory to his name I am so wondrous that saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in and I'm singing glory Can we just shout this hymn? Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of blind. Glory. that I want to ask all of us to do and, and then we're going to go on with the rest of the service but sometimes we thank the Lord and we praise him for what he brought us through and I tell you if you like me you got testimony stacked up of everything that the Lord done brought you through haters that couldn't kill you mean bosses that couldn't fire sickness that didn't take you out we we got a whole lot of stuff that the lord done brought us through but this next praise i want it to be for the stuff that didn't happen to us i don't know about y'all but when i think about the stuff that could have happened but didn't happen we should have lost our minds, but it didn't happen. We should have been in the car accident, but it didn't happen. Bullets was flying all around us. We should have got hit, but it didn't happen. Thank you, Jesus, for what didn't happen.
Jesus told me everything's gonna be all right. yourself with the next person aren't you glad that you can just be you and be thankful for who God has made you you are special all by yourself you have value you have dignity all by yourself and so we don't have to try to be somebody else You're somebody, you are special, created in the image of God and after the likeness of God, he has put a calling on your life. Open your ears to listen to the Holy Spirit. Open your mind to learn from the Lord. Sometimes the Lord said, go back to school. Sometimes the Lord said, I want you to try another trade. Sometimes the Lord says, go here and move there. You need to open your mind to learn from the Lord and then open your eyes to look at all the the opportunities around hey, hey how you doing i'm doing great sean you doing all right i'm doing well doing well man, first time here man welcome i'm glad that you're here I'm glad that you're here and, just to see what god is doing man so and you know what as many times that i had heard that okay sin relief is partnering with dwelling place I didn't realize it was this actual building. This is a lot of space. Yeah, yeah, man, it's right at 88,000 square feet of space. So when you think about uh, just how this building was, it was, you know, Pastor Leon did a great job uh, up in the front portion of the building, right. like keeping it up. And But you're looking at right at 88,000 square feet of space. Right. That's a lot so of space. That's a lot of space. So back here, we had roof damage and then the HVAC wasn't working. So and it was like that for a couple years or so. Uh, so all of this was, you know, damaged, uh, but it was an awesome uh, person who came through. Uh, we decided to help someone to store uh, presents for mothers who are currently in prison. And mm. she was working with that nonprofit. And even though we were still renovating, that we wanted to use the building for what we could use it for. And that's a blessing. And, and so, Sin Relief, how long have you all been here? Uh, it was uh, 2021 is when uh, Sin Relief purchased this building. And uh, when you think about the five focus areas of sin relief, you have care for refugees, protection and families, fight human trafficking, uh, respond to crisis, and 
And when it comes down to protecting children and families and strengthening communities, man, uh, God is really using uh, sin relief in this space. Now, this is some major space here. So what, what all is this going to be used for, especially these different classrooms? Yeah, so this group uh, goes back to uh, training and even with the uh, uh, adult literacy or financial uh, yeah, literacy when it comes down to uh, you mentioned dwell adult. place too. And then yeah, the dwell well. So working with the dwelling place uh, as they love on housing insecure, housing insecure families. Okay. So this will be a place to serve those families okay. who are housing insecure. So when it comes down to empowerment and, and working with and development, but it's also a temporary space where Refugee Memphis is going to be until uh, the rest of the other space comes online. Okay. That's gonna come online, uh, the end, hopefully, we're looking for hopefully the end of the year, wow. right? This will be online in, in a month. So, wow. so they can come on in and continue to serve, because that's what they're doing now. So this is gonna be a dormitory that you all can house workers or individuals coming to serve? Yeah, so this is going to be right at uh, 72 beds, uh, so we have 30 or so, 36 above, 36 below, right at 10 showers, so that when mission teams come in from all over, uh, mainly spring, summer, fall, uh, that they will have a place to stay as they serve out into the city. And we're also probably partnering with some smaller churches that may not have a facility like ours, like access yeah. to a gym. They may want to do a, a D now or like a- Sleepover. Yeah, sleepover, yeah, yeah that, uh, that'd be a blessing. So how can you just challenge the members of Brown just to continue to be that great mission partner that Sin Relief need, being Hampton need, and that Brown needs? Yeah, see I'm trying to do this without tearing up. He got me on that. I was gonna make it through who you tell but okay. When it comes down to the importance of people, yeah, who care, coming alongside of other people who care. It means a lot. Even it's because it is it is life and death for for many. So how can we continue to come alongside of each other? I just thank you guys, you know, for your giving and also your sacrifice uh, that you've given, I mean, for years to many all over the all over the world, also in Binghamton, here in Raleigh and Sin Relief. And uh, you, you've done more. Bless you. You've done more that you know. Brown, it, it really is about changing lives and making a difference. And, and I'm humbled that God has used Brown to be such a tremendous blessing uh, yes, to sir. Sean, to his family, to this project uh, that we are still partnering with. So, so thank you. Uh, and, and look, um, this is a time, just like you said, sure. it's a time for us to, to give even more, to pray even more, uh, to be willing to serve. So, Because some of our members have, have been a part of yes, serving. Yes, they have. Uh, Come out and serve and, yeah, and love their people. And yes. yes, truly a blessing. So, so thank you again. And uh, Sean, thank you for man, that. Thank you all. <laughs> Bless you, man. Bless you. Amen, amen, amen. This is not the time for the spirit to go down. Amen. Let's stay at the same place we were. We were high in the spirit and we're going to stay high in the spirit. Because offering time is part of our worship. Amen. Oh, I can't hear you this morning. You guys know that this month is we're taking up a special offering for missions. And Sin Relief is one of those organizations that we give to here at Brown. And so this month we have a goal of $250,000. It seems like a very big goal, right? But together we can do it. So, so far we have raised $62,263.24. Oh, you can put your hands together better for that. As we celebrate what Christ did for us on the cross, I don't know about you, but we can't pay him back for what he did for us. He paid a price that I couldn't pay for myself. But what I can do is give 
and be a part of what he has going on here at Brown. Now they gave me some speaking points and I know you guys like for us to rush through offering, but I'm just gonna go the way that God gave me in my sleep if that's okay with y'all. So now we did 62,000, but I want you to touch your neighbor and say, we can do better than that. Oh, I can't hear you. Touch your other neighbor and say, we can do better than that. And then I want you to take a little pride in what we've already done. When you see places like Sin Relief, touch your neighbor and say, we did that. When we saw the video of the young lady that was at the women's shelter and she got out and she was able to get an apartment and get her baby back, touch your neighbor and say, we did that. When we had baby Josiah and his family and they needed a house, touch your neighbor and say, we did that. I have been a lot of places, but I've never seen a place like Brown. Brown gives like nobody else. And because I'm over missions, I can tell you sometimes Pastor Or gives what's not in our budget to give. And he will say, don't worry, the people will give it back. Touch your neighbor and say, we're going to do better because we are brown and we are changing lives and we are making a difference. Now put your hands together. I don't know about you, but I get excited about giving because I remember a time when I didn't have to give. See, I remember a time when I had to touch the basket in faith. Some of y'all don't know about that, but you would just walk around and touch the basket. But now I can look at my husband and say, baby, handle that for me. And I know some of you remember a time when you didn't have to give. We're not asking you to give so that the, uh, the employees can get a raise. We're not asking you to give so we can get some new carpet. We're ask I want you to think about what we're asking you. We're asking you to give so we can give even more. Now think about that. We're not asking you to give so Pastor Orr can take his wife on a vacation. We're asking you to give so we can give more. Why wouldn't you want to be a part of that? I'm talking to those who have never given to missions. I have sat where you sat, where you sit and you worry and you think, are there, is my money going to go where they say it goes? What are they going to do with my money? Well, I'm here to tell you they give more than what we give. You don't have to worry about where your money going to go here at Brown. You're going to see where your money goes here at Brown. I had the pleasure, and I know we got to get to the word because that's what we came for. But I had the pleasure of being with a family whose child is suffering cancer at St. Jude. And then they have another child that's suffering uh, epilepsy. And the night they came during our 31 days of giving, their gas tank was on E. Their pantry was empty. I don't know if you've ever been there before. And they didn't know that they were part of the 31 days of giving. And when they got the check, the husband cried. Men don't hardly cry, especially black men. You know they be strong. The husband cried because he didn't know how he was going to get his family home. He didn't know how they were going to go to work the next day. But touch your neighbor and say, we did that. Because of the God we serve, he's working his will in to do according to his good pleasure in our lives. And we are able to be his hands and feet. So on this morning, I want you, I know you had in your mind what you were going to give. But now I want you to go back in again and think about what you really can give. In Exodus 23 and 15, the Lord says, None shall appear before me empty-handed. So everyone, every worship, ought to give something unto the Lord. Here at Brown, there are several ways to give. You can give online. You can give through Cash App. You can give through cash or check. You can mail it in. You can drop it off at our locations. You can even give by phone. We even have touchless giving out in the foyer. We want to make it as easy for you as possible. Even those online this morning, I'm asking you to give like you've never given before because we've got a goal to meet and we can meet it together. Now let's read our scripture together. 
Malachi 3 and 10, if you would read it with me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. God, I thank you today. God, I thank you for those that are going to give that have never given to missions before. God, I thank you for those that have consistently gave, God. I ask that you bless them a hundredfold, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray, God, that you continue to use us for your glory here, God, changing lives and making a difference. And God, we thank you for what you've given us, the resources that we may be able to give on today. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may come, ushers.
Come on, let's as a vast body, everybody say thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's say it. That set me free.
Come on, don't say it and not do it. Come on, give them praise. Just take a moment and think about it and give them glory. Hallelujah. 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 We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, everybody lift your voice and say, thank you. Say, Come on, and let's take a look back when I look back. Over my life. Thank you. Come on, sing some brothers. You were there. Say, Father God, we thank you for every mountain that you brought us over, for every valley that you brought us through. We just say thank you right now. Lord, for every situation, every storm, you have been good to us. You've been good for us. And God, we just say thank you right now. We recognize where would we be if it wasn't for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your goodness. And for all of that, God, we come right now with a heart full of gratitude just to say thank you. Now, Lord, we need a word from you. Speak to us, speak through us, that your word may go forth that our coming will not be in vain. God, will use us even in that. Strengthen us, God. We'll be careful to give thy name the praise. The victory is already yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Oh, truly we got so much, amen, to tell God thank you for him. We thank him for his goodness. Thank you, Mass Choir. Thank you, amen. Appreciate Pastor Ingram, amen. Thank you for leading this morning for Dr. Cole. And thank you, Brown, uh, for just your faithfulness to the vision that God has given us here at this ministry. God is using us in a mighty way as we change lives and make a difference. And we are so grateful and thankful for your generosity, amen, amen. And one of the ways that we can participate one of the ways that we can participate tomorrow is the 25th and um, every 25th of the month we cover the Mid-South in prayer and I want you uh, pull out those phones right now if you have not already text uh, prayer to 27636 would you do that will you sign up for us I would love not only for every 30 minute slot to be filled but I would, I would love to maximize this day as we pray and intercede for one another. We'll start midnight tonight and go all the way through midnight on Monday night. And we just ask you for 30 minutes. We're going to give you what to pray for, give you scriptures. You can pray whatever, and you don't have to come a certain place, go a certain. Look, it's on you, between you and God. And uh, would you do that? I think it would be a great blessing to our community and our church at this time. And then, Brown, we're reading the Bible. We're reading the Bible. And um, I love shouting. And, um, but I still remember when I was eating meat. Amen. And the best meat that Mama made uh, was when after the meat um, was still simmering in the skillet, Mama would take some flour and some water and put over that, over those poke chomps and, 
and transform poke shots into some great. I, I still remember, amen. Don't y'all have a flashback? Some of y'all are having a flashback even now. Amen. But the best shout, the best shout comes from the meat. And the meat is the word of God. And so as we're reading, as we're reading, nothing better that you can do uh, for your relationship with the Lord is to get in his word, to read. That's God talking to you. Uh, that's you receiving from the Lord the word of God. The spirit and the word goes hand in hand. And, and so if you're not already a part of our uh, devotional blog, we like to add about 500 every week, every month rather. And if you're not already subscribed, you can text devotional uh, to 27636. And I appreciate the fact uh, that we've had devotional writers this Lent season. Uh, Brother Oliver Ezell wrote this past week. Uh, Mother Bunny Killebrew wrote on Friday from Luke 10. And um, whatever we read on that Friday is what we preach uh, for the weekend. So I want to call your attention to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Reading from the New Living Translation. If you text BMBC to 27636, you get the sermon notes and all of that. And that way you can follow right along and even be able to take notes and to go back and to post it as well. But Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 12 from the New Living Translation, these words are recorded therein. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. But if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into a street and say, we wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. I assure you, even wicked Sodom will be better off than such a town on judgment day. I want to preach about this morning and I accept the terms of service. I accept the terms of service. I checked the box, brothers and sisters, without even thinking, without even second guessing. I was there in Delta's uh, Sky Club in between flights, and in order to get online, I literally had to check the box that says, I accept terms of service. And so I didn't click on it to understand what it was all about. No, I simply checked the box because in order to get on Wi-Fi, you have to to accept the terms of service. Now I wonder, Brown, how many of y'all have done the same thing? How many of y'all have checked the box without ever reading the terms? I'm sorry, I want to just hear a show of hands, a show of hands right now. Amen. Thank y'all for those who told the truth. Uh, listen, oftentimes we just click. We just check. And we don't think about what the small print is really saying how many of us have ever signed our name brothers and sisters without even reading the document that we are signing our name to we don't read the time print I bet you say sign here and we go to sign in there matter of fact have you ever noticed even the receipt you sign for have some little writing in small print 
Do you ever take the time to just read that receipt about what it says, even about returns and refund? No, we just simply sign our name. Why do we do that? Why do we just check the box without even reading? I mean, are we too busy to read? Do we think, brothers and sisters, that, that, that it would be too boring to read? I mean, I got to get my stuff. I got to get online. I got to see who's who and what they are doing. And do we think that it would be too boring to read? Or do we think we will be too bound if we read? Do you not, have you ever noticed that? Matter of fact, y'all, what I did, I actually went back and I text, I, I checked it off in order to see exactly what the, all of that small print was. And that's it right there. All of that stuff right there is what the terms of service is still going, it's still going. Say, so, do you not know? I discovered that there are some stuff you don't even post to download when you're using other folks Wi-Fi. I also discover that you acknowledge and agree that you don't have any expectation of privacy. You also agree that Delta may monitor your communications and may disclose what you are doing even to others without even your permission. And you also discover that if you do anything illegal, they're going to send you to jail. <laughs> All of that, y'all, is in the small print. Well, here's what I love about it, brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, look, Jesus in Luke chapter 10 is getting ready to send out 72 of the disciples. And Jesus is going to give them the terms of service. Now, here's what I love about it, y'all. Uh, Jesus here is not small print. No, he's going to tell them exactly what he wants them to do. Matter of fact, uh, we're in March Madness. Jesus wants them to be the point guard. God to go before him into the cities he's getting ready to go into and prepare the way and Jesus says I don't want to leave anything up to chance I'm going to tell you everything what to do how to do it where to do it I'm giving you my terms of service that's what I want to hang my hat on brown that since the Lord's terms of service are non-negotiable be certain before you check the box since the Lord's terms of service are non-negotiable. Oh, brothers and sisters, I, I know we think that we're going to heaven any kind of way. I hate to tell you, his terms are non-negotiable. I know we think that sometimes you can live like you want to live and nothing will happen to you. And you just know his terms are non-negotiable. And so we got to be certain before we check the box. What a privilege, brothers and sisters. Can you imagine these 72 individuals? They are on the Lord's team. We don't even know their name. We don't know their occupation. And yet Jesus knew who they were. And Jesus called them and chose them. What a privilege to be on the Lord's team. But what power Jesus gave them. Do you not know Jesus equipped them with everything that the 12 apostles had? Jesus even gave them power to heal the sick power to cast demons out what power they had and yet what a standard Jesus said Jesus said if you want this kind of privilege this kind of power you got to do it according to my requirements oh brothers and sisters look you can't check the box without committing to the beliefs and doing it on the Lord's terms so what are his terms? What are his terms? Well, I'm glad you asked. Y'all ask such good questions on a Sunday morning. Here's his terms, y'all. Listening to instructions. Listening to instruction. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Look what it says there. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great. The workers are few. So pray to the Lord of, who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the fields. I call this his plans for us. Listening to instruction listen to instruction the lord gave them the very road to travel 
He said, I don't want you to just out there go in any kind of way. Matter of fact, I already got my itinerary. I already know what cities I'm going to. And so the Lord gave them the road to travel. Oh, brothers and sisters, there's one prayer I believe all of us ought to pray online and even here. That's Psalm 25, verse 4. Somebody ought to type that in. Psalm 25, verse 4. Show me the right path. Lord, point out the road for me to follow. When you get up in the morning, you ought to just ask the Lord, point out the road. You guide my feet. You direct me. You keep me in your will. Listen to the instructions, the road to travel. But not only do we listen to the instruction for the road to travel, we listen to instruction, the rules to follow, so that we will know the rules to follow. Jesus is going to give them specific stuff. Some of the stuff, I don't even understand why he gave it to them. He told them, don't stop to greet anyone on the road. He, he's going to tell them, don't even take any money with you or a traveler's bag. Ladies, he said, don't even take extra pairs of sandals. I'm still trying to figure out how in the world when y'all go on a two-day uh, vacation, y'all take 10 pairs of shoes with y'all. And yet Jesus said, don't even take an extra pair of sandals with you. He said, don't even be going house to house and, and, and house hopping. No, Jesus is going to give them the rules to follow. I believe Jesus gave them these rules to follow specifically because he wanted to build their faith. He wanted them to know you're working for me and I'm going to provide for you. You are on assignment for me and I know how to open some doors. I know how to close some doors. I know how to provide for you. And even when folks don't want to do, I'll step in and take care of you. He gave them rules to follow, the road to travel. He even gave them the responsibilities to do. He said, when you're going to these towns, I want you to do basically three things. I want you to teach, preach, and heal. Teach, preach, and heal. I want you to teach and preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. I want you to heal the sick. He gave them the responsibility to do. And then he even gave them the relationships to have. He said, you're going to go into a town. You're going to find a house. I want you to go into that house. Bless the house. If they're friendly to you, stay there. Matter of fact, if they're friendly to you, eat whatever they put before you. But when you run across some haters, he said, you shake the dust off of your feet and keep on pushing. <laughs> Oh, brothers and sisters, aren't you glad that the Lord have already given us the relationship and letting us know, look, I'm sending you forth as lamb among wolves. Everybody ain't going to like you, so. Everybody ain't going to be friendly to you, so. Some folks going to talk about you, so. Some folks going to hate on you, so. Look, the Lord that already told you the relationships to have and the other one, don't even worry about it. He don't call you back. You better shake the dust. The Lord says terms of service is listening to instruction. Here's what God is saying to us this morning, Brown. Be obedient to God's word. Be obedient to God's word. Do it God's way. The B I. E L E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E, the Bible is where we get the instructions. That's why we read it a chapter a day. That's why we are reading His Bible. Why? This is the B I B L E, basic instructions before leaving earth. We got to do it God's way, be obedient to God's word, listening to instruction. But not only the terms of services, we got to listen to instruction. Here's the second thing, living for eternity. Living for eternity, I call this his promise to us, his promise to us. Because Luke chapter 10, uh, the disciples go out and they have such great success until they are excited. They're working miracles, casting demons out. They said, God, you won't believe Jesus what happened. And yet Jesus said something greater is even more important. Luke 10 verse 20, look what he says. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered 
in heaven. Jesus said, look brothers, y'all can live with eternity even now because your names are already recorded in heaven. Oh, aren't you glad, brothers and sisters, uh, our names are already written there. Uh, eternity is already guaranteed for us. We are in a win-win situation. But in living for eternity, there's some stuff you got to do right now if you're going to live for eternity then. What do I need to do right now? You got to live now with a holy lifestyle. We don't get to heaven and eternity by doing it any kind of way. Luke chapter 10 verse 13, what sorrows awaits you, Chorazim and Bethesda, for if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sin long ago, clothing themselves in sackcloth and throwing ashes on their head to show them remorse. The Lord is saying, I'm looking for repentance and righteousness. I'm looking for somebody who will come in and understand that when I'm wrong I need to confess my sin because if I confess my sin he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness I can't get to heaven living kind of any kind of way but I got to live now with a holy lifestyle I got to live a holy lifestyle now but not only do I need to live now with a holy lifestyle I got to live now with the Holy Spirit's joy I got to live now with the Holy Spirit's joy. Boy, boy, Jesus heard the testimony and Jesus got happy. Some of y'all, when shout goes on, you sit there. Watching online, you go get some coffee. I'll come back when all this stuff is over. But ain't it something? Jesus had some joy. Look, 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 look what Jesus said, Luke chapter 10, verse 21. At that same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the child life. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. The Lord got happy that here it is. God was using ordinary individual and revealing himself to them. Oh, brothers and sisters, what a peace. And joy we ought to have knowing God has given us eyes so that we can see. God has given us ears so that we can hear. God has allowed us to be able to have intimacy with the Father. He makes himself known unto us. He fills us with the joy of the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't walk around looking like we've been sucking on lemons all day long. No, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And just in case somebody say, well, my joy is just quiet joy. David said, I bless the Lord. <laughs> at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth oh magnify the Lord with me we ought to make a joyful noise unto the Lord we live now with the Holy Spirit's joy but brothers and sisters in living for eternity we live now with a hunger for the Lord we live now with a hunger for the Lord. Before Jesus finished in Luke chapter 10, uh, he's invited to a dinner there with Mary and Martha. And when he got there, Martha was busy in the kitchen, welcome him and doing and taking care of all the stuff. But look what the Bible said, verse 39, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. Mary was home. Mary said, I, I, I got that. I, I, look, I, I want to hear everything. I, I can't miss a word. And she's sitting there at the feet of Jesus receiving an end. And good God Almighty, mop the guy, man. Jesus, tell this girl off. Tell this girl to get into that kitchen. Uh, and Jesus told Mary, told Martha, no, no, Mary ain't the one. You the one, Martha. 
you too distracted you got too many irons in the fire you trying to do and handle too many things but Mary understand it's one thing that's the main thing and that is having a hunger for the word of God oh brothers and sisters she kept the main thing the main thing y'all we ought to have a hunger for Jesus I don't know about y'all, but you ought to be so excited about even coming in to worship. You, you ought to be excited. You ought to be have a pep in your step. It, it ought to be, oh, I can't wait to go to church. I, I can't wait to hear the songs of Zion. I can't wait to clap my hands. I, I can't wait to be able to lift up those palms and to tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. We got to live with a hunger for the Lord. We're living for eternity, living for eternity. Their names recorded in the book where that simply says, Ram, not only be obedient to God's word, but be optimistic about your future. Be optimistic about your future. You got to live with hope. Stop holding your head down. Stop thinking things are all bad and they can't get worse. Let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, things are getting gooder and gooder. If you know Jesus, every day with Jesus is getting sweeter than the day before. Because I already know how it's going to end up in some glad morning. When this life is over, I got another building not made by hands. Streets of gold, pearly gates, I live with hope. Be optimistic about your future for me to live is Christ and to die is gain I'm just talking about the terms of service y'all we got to listen we got to live for eternity but then we got to it's about loving for improvement it's about loving for improvement I, I call this his power working in me his power working in me. Luke chapter 10, uh, a religious law, expert in religious law, came to test Jesus one day. And said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked him, you tell me. You, you the expert, you tell me what you ought to do. And ain't this something, y'all? He gave the right answer. The man answered, verse 27, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Ain't that something? Love, love, love. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, love, love. Love. Matter of fact, in another gospel, Jesus is going to say all of the commandments hang on these two laws. Love God and love your fellow man. Love is the commandment from our heavenly father. That's why it's not optional. God doesn't give us a choice as to whether or not we want to love. No, love is a commandment. Matter of fact, love is the confirmation of our faith. If you call yourself a saint and don't have love, you ain't saved. I, I know he just didn't tell me that I ain't saved and I ain't got love for somebody. Yeah, I did. Because John said like this, look, look, if you are a child of God, how can you say you love God whom you have never seen and hate your fellow man whom you see every day? John said you are lying and the truth ain't in you because you ought to be walking in the light which means you ought to be walking in love it's the confirmation of our faith and love is the change maker that's so needed and so y'all bible says love is for our improvement you see loving god changes you the more you love god this kind of way it will change you for the better he said, love God with some of your heart, some of your soul, some of your strength, some of your mind. 
He said, love God with all. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you loving God with all, you ain't got enough room for cussing. You ain't got no room for hating. You ain't got no room for doubting. You ain't got no room. No, you love God with everything and it changes you. But not only loving God will change you, loving others will change our community. That man was Baptist for sure. Because even when he gave the right answer, he couldn't keep his mouth closed. Where well, God tell me who my neighbor is. And Jesus is going to give him the parable of the Good Samaritan. <laughs> And in the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus put him in the parable. Because some folks was like that priest who just looks and walks on by and crosses the road. Others are like the Levite who walks over and looks at him and then pass on by. But here comes a no good Samaritan. Here comes an outcast. Here some, comes somebody that everybody think is a nobody. And this is the one that stops. This is the one uh, that soothes his wounds uh, and bandages him up. This is the fellow that puts him on his uh, uh, beast and takes him to the end and pay for his services. Why? Because this man understands something. When I love my neighbor... When I love the person I don't even know, when I do good and kindness to somebody that's a stranger to me, it helps the entire community. How are we going to stop all of the gang banging? How are we going to stop all of the drive-by? It is loving others that changes our community. We need more love. We need more love. Oh, brothers and sisters, let's love one another. That's all I'm about to tell you. If we want the terms of, of our service, we got to be obedient to God's word. We got to be optimistic about our future. But then we got to be God. We got to be open to God's working. And that's what I love about love. Love wants to work on the inside of us. And so, y'all, I checked the box. I accepted the terms of service. But, 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 but you got to understand something. I wanted to get connected. I wanted to get on Wi-Fi. Who can tell me what Wi-Fi stands for? You can't because it don't stand for nothing. <laughs> I wanted to be connected to what I don't even know what it stands for. <laughs> I wanted to get online. I, I wanted to be able to surf the web. And so I checked the box, accepted the terms. But to really get connected, I had one more thing I had to do. Because there was another box that said password. I had to enter the password. Matter of fact, I had to know what the password was. Thank you, Delta. Thank you, Delta. Thank you, Delta. Delta didn't keep me guessing because when I got on the elevator, they already had up the password. When I walked into the Sky Club, they still had the password posted. They didn't want to keep me in doubt for the password. But let me tell you something, Brown, that was all good for Delta. That was all good for the Sky Club. But guess what, y'all? I recognize in life that if I really want to make it through this life, I got to be connected. And I got to be connected with something greater than just Wi-Fi. I got to be connected with something greater than just the internet. I know some of y'all just live by the WWW, but I got to be connected to somebody who is greater than just the world wide web. Brothers and sisters, the only way you can get connected to God, the only way you can get connected to heaven, you got to accept the terms, but you got to know the password. 
We got to know the password. Now some of y'all come up with all kind of strange passwords because you don't want everybody getting on your network. Sometimes we even choose uh, what the computer generates for us. But I'm here to tell somebody God have already given us the password. This password ain't no secret password. It ain't no complicated password. Nah, nah, it's a simple password. Do y'all know the password? Yeah, somebody said that there. Jesus. That's the password. If we want to be connected to God, if we want to be connected with heaven, Jesus is the password. How do I know that? Acts chapter 4, verse 12. There is no other name given under heaven and earth whereby men might be saved except the name of Jesus. John 14 verse 6. Jesus said I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the password. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. There is only one God and one mediator between God and man that's the man Jesus he is the password Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life and is through Jesus John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life accept the terms and if you accept the terms you can access the treasure but you got to know the password and I stop by to tell you this morning I accepted I accepted the terms I accepted the terms of my salvation and I put the password in Jesus and this morning Brown I believe Jesus I believe Jesus that he was the Lamb of God I believe Jesus that he was born of a virgin wrapped in swaddling clothes laid in a manger I believe Jesus that one Friday morning on an old rugged cross he went to Calvary died for my sin shed his blood went down in the grave but early Sunday morning I believe Jesus got up and he is the son of God and he is God I believe Jesus anybody else believe Jesus anybody else believe Jesus and I accepted the terms of salvation I came to Jesus just like I was weary wounded and sad but I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad I believe Jesus but not only do I accept the terms of salvation but I accept the terms of sanctification he said you can't live any kind of way because if any man be in Christ Jesus he is a new creature all things are passed away and all things have become brand new except the terms you got to drop some stuff you got to drop some folks except the terms of sanctification stop throwing rocks and hiding your hands except the terms of sanctification stop dibbling and dabbling sneaking and hiding sleeping around except the terms of sanctification you need to know that you ought to present your body as a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind accept the terms of sanctification but then accept the terms of service use me Lord use me Lord use me in your service draw me nearer every day I'm willing to run on the way I 
accept the terms of service that I'm just a sheep among wolves but I accept the terms because no weapon formed against me shall prosper I accept the terms because he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I am his own I accept the terms and I know the password and because of that I ain't got to search Google when I got problems but I can seek God I can seek God I can let my request be made known unto the Lord and God who sits high and looks low he said I can come boldly before his throne because I accepted the terms and know the password I ain't got to ask Siri nothing but I can ask my Savior I can ask my Savior he will come to my rescue anybody ever ask your Savior I asked him for bread he gave me bread I asked him for healing he gave me healing yeah because I accepted the terms and know the password I'm glad glad and because of that Jesus said it's better it's better for my name is written in the Lamb book of life one of these old days I want to hear him say servant servant well done well done well done accept the terms accept the terms know the password somebody today need to check the box but you got to be certain before you check the box somebody today somebody came a long time ago but you didn't know the terms you just came because everybody else was coming you came because big mama say it's morning bench and you going there and you getting something but oh today you ought to be certain certain of your salvation certain of your reward in heaven accept the terms know the password the door is open the invitation is extended now just for a moment only folks ought to be walking ought to be those coming to Christ if you're walking if you're on online you ought to be coming down the virtual aisle you ought to be texting join to 27636 did y'all hear that last verse we read Jesus said on judgment it would be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for those who refuse to accept the terms I don't know about y'all but I don't want to be disappointed in the end I don't want to wake up one day before the Lord and he say I never knew you but I want to make sure of my salvation and so today if that's you if you're uncertain if you're not sure of where you would spend eternity the terms are plain repentance and faith turn from your sins turn to Jesus Christ believe what he did and he'll save you right now if that's you today if you need salvation if you're unclear if you're doubtful you ought to be texting John 27636 you ought to be getting up from wherever you are you ought to be coming and you ought to be connecting with Christ maybe you're here today and the truth of the matter is preacher I don't have a church home I don't have a community the terms of service says that we will connect ourselves 
with a local body that we would be a part Jesus said forsake not the assembling of yourself but we ought to come together so that we may encourage one another it's all about community and if you're here today and you don't are not connected with the community of faith the community of body of believers today you ought to you ought to get up you ought to come you ought to check the box you ought to accept the terms if that's you online text join to 27636 somebody need to say yes somebody need to make some changes in life today and the Lord is saying I'm standing at your door I'm knocking right now say yes say yes oh can we see one pray church pray church humbly yeah yeah my soul bottom of my heart oh you ought to say yes you ought to say yes you ought to say yes check the box today hold on one more time yes Lord That's you, yeah, that's you. Somebody, somebody ought to say yes, ought to say yes. Text John to 27636. Say yes today, say yes today. Somebody need a church home. Somebody need a church home. The Spirit has been speaking to you, tugging at you. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed. But you are today. You ought to say yes. Somebody need to make some changes in life. And the spirit is saying, come, come, come. You know not what tomorrow holds. You know not what you're going to meet when you come up out of this place. Today, why don't you say yes? Why don't you say yes? Why don't you say yes? Don't you say yes? I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. If you need somebody to walk with you, thank you, Tracy. Bring them, bring them. Thank you, thank you. If you're here today, and you know your friend, your family, they need Jesus. They need a church home. Don't let them leave here without checking the box. Accepting the terms. Getting connected. Oh, yeah. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to, to your will. Oh, I'll say. God, Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for Randy and for Thea and for Eunice, God. We thank you for those who would join even online, even when this sermon is replayed. We thank you for everybody today who will check the box, who will know the password, and who are certain about what you've called them to do. Lord, I pray even now that you will continue to knit their hearts with our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, keep, keep playing that.
Lord, yes. One last thing, Brown, and I'm going to let you go. God bless you, amen. But these palm branches, what a privilege it is that we've been able to worship the Lord. And I want to close us out in prayer. I want to close us out in prayer. Matter, matter of fact, matter of fact, is you all on the altar? Um, I want to close us out in prayer. This morning, I cheated. I read chapter 11. And I already know what tomorrow is going to say. And um, the disciples asked Jesus, teach us to pray. But Jesus wanted to teach them how significant prayer was. That he told them a parable of a man who had a visitor at midnight. And the man didn't have enough bread in his house for his friend, but he wanted to be hospitable. So he went to his friend that he knew had bread, and he knocked on the door. And the friend that had bread, Jesus said, even if he says, I'm in bed, don't bother me. He said, if you, if you keep on knocking, he'll get up and he'll come. And so Luke 11 verse 9, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. I don't know what your prayer request is. I don't know what's been heavy on your heart. I tell you what's been heavy on my heart is a number of members that we have had to say goodbye to. And brothers and sisters, we never know when it's even going to be our last time. And so even now, yesterday, and I appreciate Pastor Ingram, our congregational care pastor, Pastor Anderson. I can't even do it all by myself. Yesterday, Pastor Anderson preached our member, Brother Calvin Harper's funeral. We want to be praying for his family. This afternoon, we'll preach the funeral of our member, Dorothy Robertson. We also had another member, Bernice Payne Washington, who's going to be funeralized next weekend. Our member, Jesse Townsend. I remember Michael Gregory. Michael worked on the usher board and worked on cars, slipped on away from us this week. Faithful member Jennifer Thomas, even in her passing, was up funeral, upcoming funeral. We want to be praying for all of these. And, and for those who have had uh, members to pass away, Shirley Cox's daughter passed away. Rosa Crawford's son was funeralized on yesterday. Jade Agee's husband, passed away upcoming funeral Yolanda Tayden passing of her daughter we want to be praying um, Reverend Arnold there amen uh, had his 16 year old grandson's funeral and um, so much is going on and yet we're going to keep on asking we're going to keep on praying somebody may be here today and you're going through a sickness you're going through a trial maybe you want to intercede on behalf of somebody else as an act of just faith the old folks would say is your all on the altar have you laid it before the Lord and I want you to just if that's you if you got a request if you got a somebody you want to intercede for why don't you just get up from where you are bring them and just lay it at the altar even now I need the old. I need the every Savior, 
Just bring them, just bring them. The oh, I bring that hurt, bring that sickness, bring that wayward child, bring, bring it to the altar. Yeah, every I, I need thee. Oh. Me now, my Savior, I come. If you're watching online, would you just type the name of that person even right now? Put it in the comment line. Oh, it might be yourself. Put it in the comment line. It might be a situation that you want God uh, to work on. Put it in the comment line right now. I need the oh, I. Jesus said, if your heavenly father, if you ask him for bread, he won't give you a snake. But he's going to give you what you need. He said, don't you know that your heavenly father is even greater than your earthly father? He knows what you have need of. Oh, and he can meet your need right now. He can meet your need right now. He can answer your prayer right now. He can deliver and set you free right now. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. He said, this house shall be called a house of prayer. And we have turned his house into a den of thieves. But this morning, we want to fill the altar with our prayers. We want to the altar with our worries we want to fill the altar with our stresses and our anxiety yeah I I don't even understand it all sometimes I don't even understand what's going on on the inside but the Lord knows every hour I need thee oh bless me now my Savior Savior, I come to I come to thee. Oh, lay that burden down. Lay that burden down. Leave it at the altar. Put it in the hands of Jesus. Don't take it back. Don't stress over it anymore is in his hands he's going to handle it he's going to see you through it he's going to take good care of you put it in his hands Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. I'm just glad I wasn't the only one that came in with some burdens. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that came in with some prayer requests. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that got some stuff going on and that I can't handle by myself. I'm so glad. Glory, glory. 
children. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, I feel better. I feel better. I feel better. So much better. Since I laid my burdens down, my people who are called by my name will humble themselves pray seek my face turn from their wicked ways I will hear from heaven I will heal the land I will forgive them of their sins it's a whole lot but oh, God can handle it. God can handle it. God can handle it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you see every palm. Lord, you see every tear that they represent. You see every cancer, every treatment that have been laid on this altar. Lord, you see every wayward child. You see the worry and the stress of these, your people, God. God, right now, we cast all of our cares upon you. We know you care for us. Do it right now. Heal right now. Handle the situation right now. God, we pray for some miracles. We pray for some divine testimonies. In the name of Jesus. We pray for some breakthroughs, God. God, we want you to do what only you can do. Matter of fact, we want it to be of such that your name will be glorified because nobody but you. You gave them power to heal. Lord, you gave them power to cast out demons. We pray right now that even the hand of the enemy will be stopped right now. And we pray it in the name of Jesus. Lord, may you bless us. May you keep us. Make your face to smile upon us. May you be gracious unto us. May you lift up your countenance and grant us your peace. God, for this Passion Week, use us send us into the fields for the laborers are few and I pray that every last one of us will be preaching, teaching and healing on this week I pray that we will be inviting folks back next weekend meet us in a mighty way and may you do wondrous things for each one of us we go in peace now Believing is already done. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. 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 Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Y'all get on up. Come on. Come on. I laid my burdens down. Burdens down. Glory, glory. Y'all can come. Amen. Come on. Come on. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Since I laid my burdens down. God, come on by and fellowship with us. Oh, I feel better. So much better. 